What's up guys and welcome to Inspired By, a series where we look at the musical trends past and present to understand the techniques used so that you guys can make better music. I'm Will, I make a plethora of music under the moniker Hushchild and today we're looking at one of the goats, John Hopkins. So today I came across a DM from one of my subscribers asking me about the synth sounds that John Hopkins creates. And I actually had a project in Logic from the beginning of the year before I made a full jump to Ableton. I kind of go between the two, I mix and master in Logic and I get the main portion of my production down in Ableton. And I had a track that was very much inspired by John Hopkins. So I figured I may as well present that to you guys today and give you guys a little insight into how I went about creating those sounds. It's not as difficult as you may think. It's all about syncopation. So let's jump into it. Once again, we're back with a different backdrop, this time in Logic. And as I said, this was actually a project that I made at the start of the year before I fully made a switch to Ableton. Now, the reason we're in Logic today is this is an old project that I had in the bank, uh, but one with an idea that I think a lot of you could benefit from. And that's replicating the sound of John Hopkins, or at least using this technique in a creative way to create your synths. This is the sound that I've got at the minute. And this is the sound that we're looking to replicate today. And it's actually a really easy sound to create, but the things to note are that underneath this, I actually have a bass pattern playing. Just playing straight on the one and the three there. And then this pattern above it. So it's all about syncopation. And then finally I added a higher synth just here. That kind of dead mouse kind of sound. So this all helps the main synth pattern drive through the beat and continue to make the song sound interesting. The drums here, if we need to mention those, are just highly saturated kicks and rim shots with some hi-hat and noise layered over the top. So we have this. So nothing too crazy going on there. And then I've just created an intro out of some of these sounds, processing them through EQ and a reverb, and then that is it. So this sound here, so let's go back to our main sound. And how did I go about doing that? Well, it's pretty simple. So originally I created this chord pattern in Phase Plant, and it's just a preset with some minor changes, and it sounded like this. And then what I did is I added a trance gate, but I chose the note value in the center here as 24. So within the 32 resolution, there's actually 24 notes occurring. And that just makes the sound sound like it's not in a 4-4 four, four time sequence. With this, I added a little bit of that vinyl warp sound, and then all I did was stretch it to double the amount of time so that it really sounds elongated. So with that, what I did is just bounced it in place, turned on this flex marker, and then stretched it out. So each of these here are double the amount of time. And then I created a new sound and did the same thing. Just copied that trance gate down. If you don't have trance gate by Kilo Hearts, that's fine. You can use a noise gate or you can use a compressor. And all you're gonna to wanna to do is create a side chain that ducks an odd time signature over your 4-4 synth sequence. And you want it to be playing at double time so that when you stretch it out, it sounds much slower, much more weird. This is my third sound. So more of an organ sound here. And then my fourth and final sound is here. And each of these have, you know, EQ, they've been panned differently. They've got different instances of OTT on there and they've been warped a little bit differently. Then all I do is I bounce that sound in place. 
and that creates a region underneath. Now, if we're using a different DAW, then it's even easier to do with Ableton. You'll just want to freeze and then flatten that piece of audio and then just stretch it out as you normally would. So I choose the flex marker, I choose polyphonic flex time, and then I double it to twice the speed that it was. This is what it sounds like. Then what I do at this point is run it through its own instance of OTT to just beef up that sound a little bit. So let's throw that on, bring these markers down. figure out what sounds right for that type of sound and then cut it up along here. So you can see that some of these regions here are cut and repeated with fades on and some of them are left exactly as they are. And then right at the end here, I've chopped them up differently as well. Some of them are quite loud, some of them are panned and then we just layer those sounds up. So we're left with something like this. These last two here are essentially just noise with the OTT cranked up all the way in the higher regions and just an EQ put on. So as I said, just a super easy technique there that you can use to create really strange synth sounds in the style of John Hopkins. So there we have it guys, like I said, nothing too crazy. Just took a little bit of thinking outside the box and then processing those separate sounds on separate layers. I hope that gave you guys some food for thought. So do make sure you like this video, drop a comment for what you'd like to see in future videos or any questions that you may have. And if you wanna join our Discord, our bi-weekly beat battle, or be a member of the Patreon, all of that information is in the description below. For now guys, thank you so much and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.